Alright, welcome back to a new video, and it is officially two weeks from the Ray Vargas versus Foster fight on Showtime. What is this fight? Well, Vargas is a two-division world champion and attempting to gain his third division in the Super Featherweight division after defeating Mark Maxayo in the Featherweight division for the WBC belt. And who is he going up against? Well, that is a very interesting question. He's going up against Oshakir Foster. I hope I pronounced that right, but who cares? Foster was is what we're going to be calling him from now on. But this is for the super featherweight WBC belt after Shakur Stevenson vacated them to move up to lightweight. Very interesting. Then again, the super featherweight division is in shambles right now as Shakur, the unified WBC, WBO champion, like I said, vacated and moved up. And Joe Cordina, which was the IBF world champion, um, for some reason, I think he broke his hand and in the IBF just decided to strip him of his belt. They said, yeah, now nah, you broke your hand, now nah, give me the belt. That, that's got to be depressing. Imagine, you know, knocking out someone like this and then breaking your hand and then they saying, nah, you're not going to be champion anymore. And then the WBA Super Featherweight World Champion Hector Luis Garcia got hit so hard on the head that he could not see from one of his eyes for like a quick second. Yeah, so the, like I said, the Super Featherweight division is in shambles right now. Everyone's, how do I say there's a power vacuum at this point? Anyone can claim undisputed and super featherweight at this point because I don't know about you, but I think Hector Luis Garcia might not be the same guy anymore after fighting Tank Davis. And then there's no IBF, WBC, or WBO champion. That's crazy. But Ray Vargas is going to attempt to become the WBC champion going up against Foster. So Ray Vargas is 36-0 with 22 knockouts. Very nice. A KO percentage of 61.11%. Very nice. He's going up against Foster. Like I said, he is 19-2 and two with 11 knockouts. So he has power with a knockout percentage of 52.8%. Not that bad. The most recent victory was against a 18-0 and 0 boxer with a unanimous decision win. So, you know. Well, then again, his other fight was against a 62-13 and 13 fight, which he did win via KO. So, hey, not that bad. Not that bad at all. But he did lose split decision and unanimous decision. But the interesting part is that he lost unanimous decision first and then split decision. So you can obviously tell this man is getting better. But in terms of any um any good people, I don't know. I can't see nothing. But who do I think is going to win? Very obviously going to be Ray Vargas. The difference is, will Ray Vargas TKO Foster? Because Foster has not been stopped before. He's just been you know defeated via points. So that's something. And the question, and the thing is, no, I don't think so. He, he couldn't he couldn't knock out Maxayo or even knock him down. Then again, Maxayo, I think, is a very good champion. Ex-champion at this point. And Foster is one division above them. So, I don't think he's going to stop him. But if he does stop him, that is going to make a huge statement. So, yeah. And what happens if Vargas wins? Is he going to attempt to become a four-division world champion? Because he better not end up fighting Tank again. Because Tank got to start fighting people in his own division at this point. Like, I'm a fight. I'm gonna fight these people. No, you gotta fight other 135 pounders that aren't mandatories for an interim belt. But then again, he has to fight <laughs> Devin Haney if he wants a belt. So you know, not really gonna be the best look for Vargas. You know, Vargas is kind of stuck at super featherweight at this point. But that's not the only fight that I'm interested in, because it is the return of La Azteca, Mario Barrios, that he's going to attempt to still campaign in the welterweight division. Because of his back-to-back -back losses to Javante Davis, 11-round TKO, and Keith Thurman, which which he lost pretty badly. I mean, you know, if you end up looking like this at the end of your fight, you know, you're probably going to be like, yeah, I'm not going to be top level in this division for a while, you know. But he is only 27, so that's something. So with the record of 26 wins and 2 losses, one via B, one coming from KO, like I said, from Tank, with a knockout percentage of 60%, not that bad. 17 KOs, not that bad. He is going to be fighting Santiago, Giovanni Santiago, which is a 14 and 2 with one draw. 10 wins coming by way of knockout, one loss coming way of knockout, and one draw. Then again, this is actually not going to be that bad of a fight. Both of them are coming off of two losses. One where they lost the unanimous decision, and the other one which they lost KO. Who he lost to is actually weird because he lost to um, super lightweights because he's 
also a super lightweight moving up to welterweight differences, this will be his first, I think this will be his first match at welterweight. So he lost unanimous decision to Adrian Broner, 33-4 and four in one draw. And then he lost to Gary Antoine Russell, the um, 100% KO artist. He lost in the sixth round. Not that bad. So these two people are coming off of losses. Difference is, his last fight was May of 2021. So around a year and seven months, basically, no fighting, coming up to fight Mario Barrios. Who do I think is going to win? You know, hey, Santiago sounds like a good dude, but I think Mario Barrios TKOs him. I think he beats him. Two years without fighting, coming off of a knockout loss. Probably not the best look. You know what I'm saying? Then again, Mario Barrios did also lose the top competition in his division. He did lose to Keith Thurman. So yeah, I got Ray Vargas unanimous decision against Foster. Becoming the WBC Super Featherweight World Champion. And then stays there because if it's for, it, it, it's for his own good. Either he's going to get embarrassed by Devin Haney or he's going to get knocked out by Tank Davis. It's going to be It's going to be something like that. And then Mario Barrios will win. Oh, this is actually a very, very interesting matchup. I think it's eight round TKO. You know what? No. Let, let, let's make it. Let's, let's put it right now. Nine. Round nine is where Mario Barrios TKOs Santiago. But anyways, I think these will be very good matches. Hope Mario Barrios can actually get a win in welterweight. Because if he doesn't, uh, that's it. That's a wrap for him, bro. He's, he's done. He's, he might as well just start applying for journeyman. But anyways, that is the end of the video. What is, it, what is the next video going to be about? Well, it's actually going to be about February 18th. Wood versus Lara. People think it's going to be a very good match. And things is, thing is, people actually think Lara has a chance. Whether he does, I don't know. You're going to have to wait. But like I said, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one.